Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a feature that was just added to the Blender code base for the 3.0 alpha version. This is the addition of a curve to mesh node in geometry nodes. So let's take a look at a few things we can do with it. To start off with, I have a few objects. I have a mesh cube, I have a bezier curve, and a bezier circle. I'll add a geometry node tree to my cube. This will be my base mesh. This will be the object that will hold the geometry node tree. I'm going to disconnect the group input from the node tree. Now you'll see a new entry in the add menu for curve with one node option, curve to mesh. Taking the bezier curve from my outliner, I'm going to drag it into my node tree. I'll plug its geometry into the curve option and the mesh output into the geometry node output. The first thing we want to do is add a point instance node. Let's go ahead and add an object to instance. This cube will suffice. At this point, our instance object is located along the spline of this curve. If we edit the curve, the points will move with it. We can control how many points are along the curve using the resolution option. We'll remove the point instance node for now and drag in our Bezier circle. Connecting this to the profile curve, we see we now get a mesh tube. This tube is also controllable with our curve object and its outline is controllable with our curve circle object. If we add our point instance node back in between the mesh and the output, you'll see that the points are instanced around the circles at each point on the curve. I'll shrink this cube a little so that you can see better what's happening. You can adjust the amount of instances around each circle by changing the resolution of the Bezier circle. If you reduce the resolution to one, the minimum items that you'll get instanced is four. If you don't want the points instanced this neatly, you can of course add a distribution node. And they'll be randomly distributed along the outside of this object. Coming into geometry nodes, curve objects have two attribute domains, spline and point. For now, only two attributes have been exposed on the spline domain. What that means is, for our curve and our profile curve, we can adjust those attributes. So if I add an attribute fill node to the curve, you will see that I have the spline resolution and the spline cyclic options. Removing my point distribute node, so I go back to an even distribution, if I fill the resolution and change its value to an integer, you'll see when the value is zero, I only get rings at either end of the spline. And then as I increase, I get more rings across the entire curve. The same goes for the resolution of the profile curve. Duplicating this node and placing it on the profile curve path, I can also change these values. In addition to resolution, Cyclic is also an attribute that we can adjust. Here on the curve object, I'm going to change this attribute fill to a Boolean type and change the attribute to Cyclic. Now, if I check the value button in this attribute fill node, my curve is treated as Cyclic, which means it cycles or it completes the circle. I can do the same for my profile curve. Of course, you can combine some of these effects. Here I have my two curve objects driving a solid tube and some instances. If I wanted to assign materials to these, first I would need to go back to my original object, which is the cube, and assign materials to the object of the cube, not the data. Do this simply by changing the dropdown 
from data to object, and then adding your materials. If I want to assign different materials to the parts of the mesh that I've generated, I need to change the material index of that part of my tree. I can do that with an attribute fill node, so I'll duplicate this one, and I'll drop it here after this curve to mesh operation. I'll change the type to integer, and the attribute to material index. You may notice that even though you select 0, 1, or 2, your material may not change. I have found that you may need to connect the geometry output of your group input to your join geometry node for this to take effect. Of course, you will want to go back in and edit your main object and delete any vertices. I can do it for these rings as well by duplicating this attribute fill node and dropping it between these point instances and their join geometry. I can now use the value of 0, 1, or 2 corresponding to 0, 1, and 2 of my original cube object's material slots. So there we go, the new curve to mesh node. Give it a try, see what you can come up with to do with it. I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. I hope you're checking out the new Blender 3.0 Alpha as new features are getting added to it, and there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.